What's up guys, Chad again. So I want to go back to the basics, all right? So I, like, I get a lot of questions from people about, hey, uh, mixed designs, what, it, what are you using? Who are you buying it from? And again, I want to go back all the way to the basics. So this is pretty standard stuff. Um, there's nothing spectacular about it. Uh, we're in the concrete industry. So I use standard masonry products, all right? So you can go to Home Depot, you can go wherever you wanna go and you can get these products there, okay? They're affordable, they're, they're you know, inexpensive in a way as long as you do your processes consistently, okay? So standard stuff. I'm, today we're just doing a small feature. Um, everything we're doing is at home hand mixing, you know, stuff that you can do no problem with basic stuff. I've got my trusty old ass paddle mixer. Um, you can see it's just a standard paddle mixer. Um, pretty beat up, but she does the trick. Okay, so we got a paddle mixer. We have our bucket. So what I do is I start out and I start out with about a third water. Okay. Uh, I try to explain to people I would rather have a little more water in it and have a loose mix, have to dump some out and add, um, you know, more mortar mix or Portland to it in order to, you know, rather than getting it too dry uh, and stressing out trusty old paddle mixer. So I start out with a 1-2 Portland, all right? So this is just type 1-2 Portland. Um, I've got my my measuring cup I do two of these per buck bucket so I've got my two Portland in there I like to acclimate it first so I put those in I just give it a little mix so that the Portland breaks up a little bit and it's part of the water Okay, be careful going full bore because it will want to splash back at you. Um, the last thing you want is some Portland in the eye. So then what I do is I've got a standard uh, Type S mortar mix. Okay, this is a standard masonry mortar mix. Uh, type S, I've used S, I've used N. Um, I like using this company specifically. It's a low lime. Uh, lime creates efflorescence. So the more you can minimize that, the better. Um, and we've got some methods. I think it's almost impossible to never have efflorescence, but there are ways and methods to minimize it the best that we can. Okay, so um, I take this, and this is kind of important. I mean, I know this is simple stuff, but hey, you know what? Uh, we're all laborers here and we all got to kind of do it. So I don't let it flop out. I just kind of let it go in. And what I do is I throw in about three quarters of a bag. And you're probably saying, wow, that's a lot of, you know, product to try to mix all at once. But this method has worked very well for me. So I continue to do it. So you can see, it looks like I'm full. Um, I've got my third of water at the bottom. This is the key part of it. So I don't muscle it down. I give it a couple of spins, foot on the bucket. I get it to the bottom. Now I know I'm in the water. Now what I do is I let the paddle mixer rotate around the bucket on the bottom, slowly pulling down the powder, okay? As I'm going around the bottom, I'm going to start to pull up a little bit. Consistently mixing it.
So you can see right now we got it loose, okay? Um, this is why I said I like to kind of go loose at first, and then I add into it um, all cementitious material ends up with a fault set. Um, so, you know, your mixing time is supposed to be around three minutes. Your sitting time is supposed to be around three minutes as well. So in between, you mix it, you let it sit. After about three minutes, you're going to get what's called a fault set. That fault set is nothing more than what it is, fault set. So it hardens a little bit. What you want to do is you want to retemper your mud after that. Just because it seems like it's hardened does not mean that you need to add water, okay? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it just needs motion, needs to move. And once it moves, it goes back to its original form. So right now we gotta add a little bit. So I'm gonna grab the bag. And again, for all you laborers out there, um, again, I'm just kinda gonna tell you what's worked for me. So when I do this, I'll lay out my bags all the way through, okay? Pool trowel. Again, I know these things are stupid and most people are like, you know, why even talk about these things? But you know what? I've seen people struggle with it. So you got this little tab on the top here, okay? So what I do is about, I don't know, inch two, right down, I take my spade, I pop it in there, okay? So now I take simple little method okay and this will help th these laborers so i just take it and i pull it off that's it this keeps it nice and easy standing up non-back breaking bags not going to break on you you got a nice spout okay I, I tip it forward i put my right foot underneath the bag i grab it from underneath i pick it up i set it on it i only want to put a little bit in here so that's about what i want right there Okay, so that consistency is what I was looking for. So, we got a nice loose mix underneath it. It's gonna stiffen up. I give myself just a little tiny water on the top. Not much, just enough, okay? So, now I'm going back to mix it. I'm gonna slowly pull up and down, pull it a little bit down as I go. All right, so we can see, ready? So these are what I call breadcrumbs right here. This is a little stiff. We don't want it like that, okay? So we call those breadcrumbs. Those are good for if you're using a hawk and you wanna be mudding in some joints on brick, but this is uh, not good for what we're doing. So give it a little squirt, nothing major because water goes a long ways with this. So I just wanna loosen it up to the consistency that I want. So I come back up. I'm constantly pulling up and pushing down so I'm not stressing the machine. This machine I've had for like, I don't know, like five, six years. This thing is, again, watch me say that and break it today, but hey, you know what? She's done well for me. But again, I come up, I go down. What I'm doing is pulling that dry um, mix down to the bottom so I get the whole entire mix consistent. So, So this is the key factor for me. So years of doing this, what I'm looking for is a very specific thing. Um, and again, it's just something that I've picked up on. Maybe it's a thing, but what I'm looking for is the mud to be a certain 
texture and mark come over here i want to show you so that texture it needs to stay standing but it needs to be soft enough that see how when i jiggle it it sags okay so this is really really good this is what i'm looking for now with my machine if i was a laborer and i was the guy making mud paddle mixing buckets all day long um, to try to keep myself consistent this is what i look for i'm looking for when i have my paddle mixing and i pull it up okay and then when i pull it up and i pull it out it does a very specific thing it cores a spiral well and holds in that form I want you to come over here and I want you, I'm going to show you this, okay? So I'm going to mix it for a couple seconds and when I pull out, you're going to see this is what I look for, okay? So I want to mix it up a little. Now I'm going to pull it out, okay? Now watch what it does. That is what I look for. See that cord tunnel? That tells me that I've got the consistency that I want for my mud. This is good throwing mud. So I hope this helps the laborers. I hope it helps everybody because this is one of the most important parts of the entire project. The mud guy is the man. That guy dictates everything for the carving. And guys, when you guys subscribe, it's uh, go to the YouTube channel and it's the Design House um on youtube and it's d-e-z-i-g-n-h-o-u-z-e -E. -E. again guys i hope you like what we're doing we're going to keep it up um stay tuned for the next videos thanks man